In this video, we connect to Windows Virtual Desktop with a Raspberry Pi. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. In this video, we're going to use a Raspberry Pi to access Windows Virtual Desktop using the Stratodesk client. Before we start, please like, subscribe, share, and click the bell icon for new content. That supports my channel so I can continue creating these videos. If you want to learn more about Windows Virtual Desktop, check out my course on udemy.com, Zero to Hero with Windows Virtual Desktop. I've been waiting for this for some time. The Raspberry Pi is an interesting option to access Windows Virtual Desktop. It's cheap, powerful enough for a remote desktop session, and easy to get. But there hasn't been an option for Windows Virtual Desktop on Raspberry Pi until now. Stratodesk recently announced that their Linux client now supports Raspberry Pi. Good news, but be aware that this is not a free or open source option. I'm using a trial version that's available from their website. I'll include the link below. Before we start, let's ask the question, why Raspberry Pi and Windows Virtual Desktop? The first reason is that it has a high geek factor. It's cool, but that's not enough to justify it for a business. There are other terminal options available to connect to Windows Virtual Desktop, and for the enterprise, that may be a better option. They offer a purpose-built device preloaded with software and usually have some level of support and central management. Although these devices may have a higher entry point, the total cost of ownership will probably be lower over the lifetime of the device. But with the rush to remote working over the past few months, I see an advantage to a cheap option running on readily available hardware. This could be sent out to end users with little impact if it doesn't come back. It would work well as a temporary or almost disposable endpoint option. So with that, here's what we need to get started. We need a Raspberry Pi and all the accessories to get it connected to a keyboard and monitor. The software works on Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. The 4 comes with dual monitor support and is faster but costs a little extra. I got a Raspberry Pi 4 kit with 8 gigs of RAM, a case, one display cable, and a power supply for just over $100 US. But the models with less RAM will work as well. You need a micro SD card that can be formatted. You'll need to download and extract the image from Stratodesk. I'll include the link below. When you sign up, use a business account rather than a free account like Gmail or Outlook. They sent me the link to a 64-bit installer. I had to open a support ticket to get the ARM version for Raspberry Pi, and they required a business email address to send me that link. Once you have everything ready, let's get started by imaging the SD card. Here I am in Windows. I have Stratodesk No Touch OS extracted, and this is the ARM version. Next, I'm going to insert the new micro SD card into a card reader. And that card reader does have to be attached to your Windows machine. I hope you know that already. Okay, so here we have it. It's in D, we can see it on the screen. And do make note of the SD card drive letter. We'll need that coming up shortly. Once the card is installed, run flash sdcard.cmd in the extracted files. And if you don't see the flash sdcard.command file, you may be using the wrong version of the Stratodesk software. Make sure that it has this armhf in the file name. If it doesn't have that, if it's something like 64-bit, then you'll want to reach out to Stratodesk support and ask them for the Raspberry Pi version. So we'll run flash SD card. And yes, we want to run it anyway. That's going to open the Win32 disk imager. And I'm just going to minimize the window behind it. And under device, I know this is probably pretty small, but uh, under device here in the corner, just make sure that's set to the SD card. In my example, that's D. And then once that's selected, click right. And it'll confirm the overwrite. Click yes. Now we just give it a couple minutes to finish. All right, that finished. Here you can see now it's showing D is no touch boot. I'm just going to right click and eject that. Once we're finished, we're ready to insert it into the Raspberry Pi and boot that. 
Unfortunately, I don't have a video capture card or any type of device to do that. Uh, that was on my Christmas list, but I guess I just wasn't good enough this year. I'm going to take some video and pictures of the process and hope for the best with that. Let's switch over and boot the Raspberry Pi with the freshly imaged SD card. Here we are booting the Raspberry Pi. And I do apologize for the image quality of this, but I'll make sure you'll be able to see what's important. To start out, we have to go through a one-time setup process. And from here, I'm going to select my time zone. We'll set America, Chicago, and then the country, system locale, and keyboard layout. That's all United States and English. We'll go to next. It asks for a configuration. And the only options in here are Citrix Workspace Hub, Citrix Workspace App, Firefox Browser, and Chromium Browser. I'm just going to select Chromium Browser. Go to next. We have to set a password. I'll accept the terms of the license and click finish. The initial setup's complete. I'll just close the wizard. And as you can see, we now have a Chromium browser up in the corner. I don't use that, uh, but it's there. So next we're going to go to configuration. We'll enter our password. Notice in the upper right hand corner, it says no IP address. So it doesn't have a Wi-Fi connection yet. So let's go into network. Interfaces. and edit wireless one. Here you'll have to enter your SSID, set the type of security and enter in any credentials. I hope there's a better way to configure wireless networking that I'm missing. Uh, this could be a stumbling block for remote users if you have to walk them through setting up their own personal network. Doing it this way, it doesn't have the auto detection where you just pick an SSID and enter in the password. So I'm gonna go to wireless LAN. I'll enter my SSID. For security, I'm using WPA2 Personal. And if you have problems finding these settings, I had to go into the properties on my Windows 10 machine, uh, go into the wireless pop properties, and it will tell you what you need in there, except for the pre-shared key. So once that's set, and again, your security and uh, obviously SSID may be different, so you just need to get that entered correctly. Uh, once that's done, click Save. Now you may be able to see this. It still shows no IP address. Uh, we do have to restart it for that to take effect, but we also have to restart it uh, after setting up dual monitors. So let's configure that next. If you don't have dual monitors, you can just skip this step. But if you do, go to Display. Set multi-monitor mode to merge. And then set the position of the secondary screen to whatever location your secondary screen is at. So mine is on the right, so it's just set to the default is right of. And that's it. Let's click Save and give it a second here. We'll close this and we'll reboot to let the changes take effect. Reboot. Yes, I do. And we should see a reboot. Here we go. This is why it's nice to have the faster Raspberry Pi, especially when testing. Things reboot and just work a little bit quicker. Now that we're back, let's add the Windows Virtual Desktop connection. So we'll go to the Start menu and Configuration. We have to enter that password again. And go to Connections. Notice also, before we go on, that we do have an IP address. And I know you can't see this, uh, but there is a second monitor. I'll show both monitors shortly. So we're going to add a connection. And then after you hit Add, go into the connection. This is the new one I just created. So let's give the connection a name. Uh, I'll do something really creative like WVD. And then under connection mode, we are going to scroll down and find Windows Virtual Desktop. For the connection target, 
This is the RD web feed for Windows Virtual Desktop. So it's the same for everybody. And I'll just enter it in. We'll make sure that's correct. I'll include this URL in the comments. Just look below the video. This is all the settings I added for my testing, but as you can see, there are other options you can add and test for yourself. So once that's done, I'll click Save. There, we'll close this. And now on the upper left, I've got a Windows Virtual Desktop icon. So next I'll double click on WVD. Here I'll enter the credentials. Enter the username and password. It supports MFA, that's a good sign. Before I continue, I'm going to pause here, reposition the monitors and the camera so you can see both screens. Okay, I do apologize for how lame this looks, uh, but let's just move on with it. My MFA prompt timed out, so let me go back and try it again. I'll zoom in on the window that just popped up. It's asking what application I want to connect to. It shows the default desktop, and I'd also publish an app notepad. So I'm gonna do default desktop. And I do see there's quite the glare coming off from one, but hopefully this will prove the point. Okay, so this is good. I'm logged in to Windows Virtual Desktop with dual monitors using a Raspberry Pi. Let's open up an application, and it looks like my video might be jumping around a little bit. That's not Windows Virtual Desktop or Stratodesk. That's the solution I have to display two monitors. All I want to do, though, is open up an application. So this is just calculator, and you can see I have it on one, and you can just move it right over to the other one. Okay, so I apologize for the bad visuals again, but it works. That is how we use Raspberry Pi and Stratodesk to connect to Windows Virtual Desktop. That's how to add an image to the SD card and connect to Windows Virtual Desktop with Stratodesk on a Raspberry Pi. This was not an all-inclusive introduction to Stratodesk. There's way more capabilities that I didn't cover. At the time of this recording, I only had a couple hours of actually using the software. My goal for this video was limited to getting the Raspberry Pi running and connected to Windows Virtual Desktop. With that said, I hope you found this useful. Please like, subscribe, share, and as always, thanks for watching.